Today, I want to take some time to bring together the threads of what we've spoken about so far with the fight, flight, freeze, fall, and fawn responses, the five Fs. First, we spoke about the fight response, which is often felt from the waist up, from beating heart to a churning gut to tension in the shoulders and clenched fists, a clenched jaw, muscle tightness, and a focus on what's in front of you. Then we kind of shot forward to the flight response, which is just hauling us out of there. Oftentimes people who can get out of the situation that is causing them stress or that's quite dangerous, get out of the situation. It's a very good and quick way of moving forward. The tricky thing is when ego gets in the way, especially with people who are generally more prone to, to violence or to aggression, they may tackle the situation head on and argue, spit, steal, throw, hit, hurt. This sort of stuff happens within the fight response and the flight response is the complete opposite of that. We wanna find a way to return to safety. A really interesting story comes to mind where a lady who came to see a trauma therapist by the name of Peter Levine, this lady had a sensation that she needed to run, she needed to get out of there. And what Peter Levine did was he sat her down and got her to lift her feet up from the ground and pretend as if she was running. The body began to pick up, the heart began to race, and she imagined as if she was getting to some form of safety. This allowed the body to get out of that mental situation, that situation that she created in her mind. And in turn, she was able to overcome that particular fear that she came to session with. The flight response happens from the waist down. We often feel it with tension in the feet, restless feet, feet that feel like we need to move out of there and get out of that situation. That's the fight and flight response. The freeze and the fall response is, is a continuation of the fight and flight response. When a person cannot escape by using force or by getting out of that situation, the body can freeze up. And the utility of this in the wild is that you blend into your surroundings. An animal that sees a predator far off is able to blend into its surroundings and it just stops. The tricky thing is with humans, we feel the freeze from the tip of our head to the bottom of our feet. And we can often feel the fight and the flight response happen simultaneously that, that our body doesn't really know what to do. The four response is when we completely collapse. Our body has come to a point where it cannot move forward. Uh, polyvagal theory is a theory that was developed by Stephen Porges. And he talks about how the vagus nerve, which comes out of the base of our brain, can initiate a particular response called the dorsal dive where the body completely shuts down to preserve energy. The vagus nerve is really interesting because it extends from the base of our brain all the way through our respiratory system, our cardiovascular system, down towards our digestive system and the branches that extend out of that. It's a complex set of neural structures that connect upwards into the brain and cause a very intense sensory experience. So it can either increase our somatic output, our body-based output, or it can also shut our body down. So that's the, that's the fall response in action. The fawn response is a, what I consider to be a truly human response. And often the way that it's described is people-pleasing. We try to appease the people or the thing that causes us stress or that is causing us a sense of threat. The fight, flight, freeze, fall, fawn responses, they're all very natural responses. And the more we understand how to pick them up within our own bodies, the more we can work out ways to address them and to work through them, to push through them and overcome these particular sensations. If, of course, they need to be overcome. Thanks for watching. I look forward to speaking with you next time.